Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimby Camper. So today we're gonna to talk about adding ultra heat battery warmers to our Line Energy 1300 UT batteries. I wanna go over with you why I decided to do this and how exactly I installed them. Now let's go over some basic questions about lithium batteries and freezing temperatures to start with. Number one, can you use a lithium battery when it's freezing? Yes. It can be used down to line energy says at negative four degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius. So the battery can be stored when it's freezing without any issues. The battery can be discharged or used when it's freezing without any issues. So if you can use the battery when it's freezing, then what's the issue with a lithium battery in freezing weather? There's only one issue that you can have, and that issue is you can't charge the batteries when it's freezing. All of the name brand batteries have low temperature and high temperature charging protection built into the battery monitoring system so that you can't accidentally do this. What happens apparently is if you charge a lithium battery when it's freezing, then it causes these things to form in the cells called dendrite. These dendrites are commonly referred to like a finger-like protrusion coming from the cells. And if those get together and they touch each other, it can short the cell out and it can cause your battery to become harmed. In my case with the Line Energy 1300s, the battery monitoring system allows the batteries to charge between 32 degrees and 115 degrees. Now what I'm saying about some of these cheaper batteries, like some of the ones you find on Amazon and stuff, are they bad batteries? No, a lot of people have very good reviews of them. A lot of them say that they have cold temperature charging and if you watch some breakdowns on them and some testing, you'll see that they don't actually have cold temperature charging. Does that mean that it's a bad battery? No. Um, in that case, what you would wanna do there's two things you can do actually. Number one, you can move the batteries closer into the living space if they're under your dinette table and that's part of your living space and you have the heat on in there, then they're never gonna get to where they're freezing unless it, the camper's in storage, right? The other thing that you can do is you can buy a charge controller or converter such as a Victron unit, which actually has a temperature probe on it so it can secondarily look for the temperature. Now my charge controller is a Renogy. I was actually trying to find something like that and they actually have temperature modules, but they say that they're only for lead acid batteries. And when I sent them a message and asked them why, all they could tell me was that with a lithium battery, you should have charge protection built into the battery. So it didn't say that it wouldn't work. So I'm not so sure about that, but I would, I would trust Victron and that's what a lot of people do. Now, I've never really had many issues with my batteries freezing. Um, the only time that I've actually noticed it was once, because what I did when I installed them is number one, the batteries are usually in the very front compartment of my fifth wheel. Well, what I did, because that wasn't very airtight or anything, I mean, there's like one inch gaps in there everywhere. I did put some tape and stuff in there to try to help. But what we ended up doing is we installed them in the basement right here, which was right behind the wall the back wall where the batteries were previously and so the wires the original wiring i just drilled a hole through the wall it fit on the wires and everything everything worked fine now back to my story about what went wrong so my batteries are usually fully charged because i have the 300 watts of solar on the roof and that just keeps them charged all the time so even if i'm not somewhere where i can plug in and say i have it in storage which is actually at my neighbor's house the batteries just stay full but in the winter time, you know, you get some cloudy days and nothing much happens and you don't get a lot of charging and you can have some drainage of the batteries. In my case, this was compounded because I had recently put in my inverter, my 2000 watt pure sign inverter to the whole camper. And whenever I run that inverter, I have to turn the converter off. I was actually having some projects done over at Shelburne RV, which check out their channel. Steve over there, he helps me out a lot. but. I had some projects done over there and I went to pick the camper up and the landing jacks didn't work because the batteries were dead. Now this was my first clue that I had an issue. So I just plugged the umbilical cord into the truck, let it set a few minutes and then, you know, the, the landing jacks worked and I was able to hook up. Now that's one thing that I do like a lot about lithium batteries is because Line Energy says that you can drain those all the way down to zero without hurting them. If that was still my golf cart batteries that I had in there, I'd have to worry like, 
I hope this wasn't the time where they drained down too, too far past that 50% and killed the batteries where they're not any good. So I don't have to worry about that at all. And I love my lithium batteries because of that. But then after I hooked up, so I turned the generator on because I got the generator mounted in the camper so I can always have a source of power there. Turned it on to charge the batteries up. Well, I didn't notice whenever I was running the generator that the batteries weren't charging because that converter was turned off. So it didn't do me any good. So then we headed out on a trip. We went down to David Crockett Birthplace State Park. And when I put that inverter in, I moved my battery monitoring system inside the camper. So I have a better idea at all times of what my battery status is. Well, I noticed that even when it was plugged in, the battery still showed dead and it didn't show that they were charging and I couldn't figure out why. I figured out that that breaker was turned off to the converter and I thought, oh, that'll fix the problem, flipped it back on. Everything's good until I go over and look at the battery monitoring system. It's still not charging. Why is it not charging? I can't understand why it's not charging. Well, this was the one time that I've had the batteries that I've actually noticed that the inside compartment under the camper was frozen. So the temperature was below 32 degrees there, and I had a feeling that that's why they weren't charging. So what I did to test that theory out is I got a heating pad that I keep in the camper for my back. I got the heating pad, it's a pretty big one. I wrapped it around the batteries, I turned it on, and in about 10 minutes, the batteries were charging. So that answered my question for me. All right, so then I started doing some research on what can I do to keep this from happening again, say that if we were boondocking or something and I really needed the power without taking just my regular heating pad and putting it in there. So what could I do for some extra protection? Now, if you go on YouTube and you start looking as you probably are is why you got here, but if you start looking for heating pads on batteries, you come up with all kinds of solutions. You come up with do-it-yourself options. You come up with videos of people putting just black tank heaters on their batteries. You come up with, uh, I actually saw a video which led me down this particular path, and that was produced by Battleborn in their heating pads that they use on their batteries, which they said were made from ultra heat. So I reached out to Ultra Heat to see if they had any heating pad solutions for the line energy batteries. Well, they did, and they sent me a couple of options there. They said that they had one pad that you could lay down under the battery that would heat them up, but most manufacturers like the ones that actually heated it up from the sides. So they said they don't have a lot of information online about these because they keep getting ripped off and people keep making knockoffs of them and they keep having issues there. So they've had to be real limited about the information that they add online. Now we're gonna go into a little bit more here in a minute of why we chose these particular heating pads versus some of the other stuff and the pros and cons. So if you stick around for a minute, we're gonna get there, okay? Another thing about these ultra heat pads that I really liked is that they only use 2.5 amps per set. Now you need one set for each battery and each set has two pads that stick on the sides, one on each side of the battery. But 2.5 amps, so that means that with two sets for my two batteries, I'm only at five amps. So at five amps for both batteries, I didn't figure that that was too big of a loss, especially since you really only need it when you're charging the batteries up. So let's talk a little bit more about why we chose the Ultra Heat pads. And I'm gonna give you some information from my conversations with them about why you should choose this type of pad versus anything else that you can find on the market. Now, as I was alluding to a minute ago, a lot of people, if videos that you're watching, people just get tank heaters and they put on their batteries. So I asked Ultra Heat why this would or wouldn't be a good idea. Now, I didn't know this before, but Ultra Heat's actually the original manufacturer of RV tank heaters, and they started manufacturing them in 1986. So I think that they might have an idea what they're talking about. Now they told me that using heating pads designed for tanks is a very bad idea for your batteries. And the reason that they told me this was they said that they engineer each heating element in a different way for a different purpose. And the ones for the tanks, they're very good at monitoring the temperature level of the fluids inside the tanks and trying to heat that fluid up to keep it from freezing. They also noted that they're very poor at monitoring the ambient temperature of a battery in trying to warm that up. So what can happen is you can inadvertently damage the case of your battery with the plastic and stuff there by overheating it by accident. And they stated that 
This has a high probability of not working at all, damaging the case or damaging the cells that are inside the case. So doesn't really sound like too good of an option to save a little bit of money to me. All right, so why should you choose the ultra heat pads over any of the Chinese knockoffs that you see floating around on the market, which from what I understand are just knockoffs of the same product? Well, they stated that it all comes down to the heating pad inside there, the heating element. And so they put a lot of design work into their heating element and they did this for the longevity. Your lithium battery should last 20 years plus. And you know, if you put a cheap heating pad on there that only lasts four or five years, then you're not doing yourself any favors. So you want a product that's designed in order to last the longevity of your battery life. And they said that they're the only one in the world that makes their heating pads, their heating elements in this particular way where that they believe that they will have the longevity of your lithium batteries in mind. They said that some of those other competitors use tracing wires, which actually suffer from metal fatigue. They wear out faster, usually have a lifespan of three to four years, and they're just not going to last the long haul. They also deliver an inconsistent heat across your battery, so they're not gonna be as helpful when they do work. So what's one last reason why you should choose the ultra heat pads to heat your batteries with? Well, they are the only company that sources and produces everything right here in America. All right, so now that we talked about why we did this, let's talk about how we did it in our particular case. So the first step that I did was turn off the solar coming into the camper because you gotta unhook the batteries. And with my charge controller, when I installed it, I remember reading that it needed to be hooked up to battery power and not just the solar power coming in because that can damage it somehow. I don't know the specifics on that, but I did flip the switch in order to cut the power off to my solar that's on the roof coming down into the battery bank. After this, I did unhook the batteries from the post and then I just removed them from the compartment. I cleaned the sides of the batteries with alcohol pads. And this is the first time truthfully that I noticed because I sent UltraHeat a, a message and I feel really incompetent at this time, but I sent them a message asking about the instructions because I didn't get any instructions. Well, hello, they're printed on the side of the pad. <laughs> so after I got them cleaned off with the alcohol, I did go back and then I stuck each heating pad onto the battery. Now the wires that are attached to the panels are quite lengthy and they do have a weather resistant connector that goes on there so it makes it easier if you need to take the batteries out and so i wanted to keep use of that but i didn't need all the long wires so i did shorten the wires i used crimp connectors for that i talked to ultra heat about doing that they said there was no issue with shortening the wires so i shorted the wires from the panel to the connector then i also shorted the wire that was after the connector that you actually hooked to the camper and I put a ring connector on the end of that. Once I got done with that, that's all there is to getting the battery part of the preparation done. Now you have to get all the other components that you're gonna hook it to in the camper ready. They do make an ambient sensor temperature control with this unit as well as a relay. They said I didn't need a relay if I was only gonna use two sets. And I decided against the ambient temperature sensor because I wanted to just have it on a switch because if I'm not charging and I don't need it on, there's no reason for them to be on and be draining my batteries. So with my intermittent use, maybe if I was full time, I'd want the ambient temperature sensor, but with my intermittent use, I just want to be able to turn them off whenever I'm not using it. Now the switch that I used and all the components that I'm going to use and talk about, I did buy off of Amazon. So I'm going to put links down here. I believe the switch I'll actually use up to 20 amps. And so the uh, five amps that I'm using, I felt more than comfortable with putting on this switch. And then I also decided to use some bus bars for my installation, which we'll get into in just a minute. But all those parts, they're gonna be in the description down below uh, for our affiliate links for Amazon. It does help the channel out a little bit if you buy stuff off of there. So I mounted this switch that I'm gonna use right inside my basement door over on the generator side because I wanted it to be easily accessible, but I didn't need it to be accessible from inside the camper because I don't plan on needing to use it all that much. I did have a little bit of worry when I was mounting the switch that it wouldn't clear the gas shock on the door when it opened and closed. Uh, but as you can tell from this little video clip, there's no issue or interference with that at all. 
So then I did use these bus bars in order to mount this. And the bus bars I used because I wanted it to have a cleaner look because you have a lot of wires. There's two wires coming off of each pad. So each set has four wires. So that's eight wires total. And that way you don't have this big bunch of balled up mess. I just wanted to use some bus bars. So my plan is to send the battery power through the switch and then use the switch to turn on the power to the bus bar, which then distributes the power across the heating panel. So at this time, I decided to go ahead and put my batteries back in so I could start hooking everything up. And when I did this, I did have to move one of my pieces of angled aluminum over that I used to hold my batteries down because the width of the pads was just enough to make it not really want to fit down in there. So I did have to move my bracket, my holding bracket over just a tad. So then I decided to take the positive wires from all of the heating panels and put them on the positive bus bar. And then I took all the negative wires and I put them on the negative bus bar. Now I ran a positive wire from the positive bus bar to the switch for the outgoing power. And then I added the other wire from the switch to a power, a 12 volt power distribution panel that I have inside the camper with a 10 amp fuse on it. This should complete the, the hot portion of that, but I also had to put a negative wire from the power distribution center over to the switch because the switch actually has a light on that comes on whenever you switch it up and it's turned on. And so that requires a ground. And so I did have to run one, one negative wire for the ground all the way to the switch. Then I had to take a wire on the negative side of the power distribution 12 volt center and put to the negative bus bar to connect all those to the ground. Then I just took some zip ties to tidy everything up just a little bit. To this point, I had left the batteries unhooked even though they were in place. And so I connected all my battery cables back up and being very careful to wire them correctly. Then I turned the solar back on and this project's done. Now the sad part about this project is it's actually the end of winter now. And so it's just barely dipping into freezing a little bit. I don't anticipate even needing to use this for the rest of the year, but I wanted to go ahead and get this project done. That way I don't ever have to worry about having these issues again. And the guys down there at Ultra Heat did me right, and I thank them. And I'm going to put a link to how you can find out what products are needed for your batteries and how you can order them. They're going to be down in the description below, but please check them out. Thanks guys for watching this video and sticking around. Thanks for just uh, enjoying the journey with me, and I really appreciate your support. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.